I have special guests in my office, so I'll keep it short. I saw the report. I have nothing to say about it. Well, he's an excellent Secretary of State. He has the President's ear, the President's trust. He's doing an incredible job as our top diplomat. And that would not be an unprecedented move. Of course, Presidents Nixon and Ford did the same thing with um, Secretary of State Kissinger. But at the same time, the President is looking at a slate of probably five or so, I'd say, with, with Secretary Pompeo, five plus. Um, five different candidates, and I frankly think he has many great options and can't go wrong with his choice. Oh, I think I'd rule much out for President Trump. He's look what he's done. Just that what, what's happened just this week. He's just this summer. He's had two back-to-back -back Supreme Court decisions in favor of his border security policy, five to four in July or so, uh, allowing the Pentagon to use 2.5 billion dollars for the border construction. Uh, and that just last night, a 7 to 2 decision, not, not a squeaker, folks, 7 to 2, agreeing with his new asylum law, which basically means if you're coming through another country, stop there first and, and claim asylum. At least stay there while you're processing your claim here, which we know takes an awful lot of time, more than the usual amount of days that are allotted. So uh, this president has two new Republican congressmen in North Carolina because of his efforts. We have two Supreme Court decisions because on the border because of his efforts. Just yesterday, his 150th federal judge was confirmed. It's pretty remarkable progress. No, yeah, is is the president going to, the president the going to announce any sort of gun, any sort of specifics on what he wants to see in terms of he gun will. policy? He will. He will in due course. Uh, it could be today. Uh, he's going to meet the, it could not be today. He's going to meet the Republicans later tonight, as you know, at their retreat in Baltimore. And he'll probably be talking about that there. I have been in the room for these discussions. Just yesterday, he spoke to Republican and Democratic United States senators um, at length about what is possible and what is um, practicable and what would pass. And uh, we're aware that the previous administration did very little on, on this issue. In fact, Politico had a fantastic piece about a month ago laying out why nothing, why in their view nothing big was done by the last administration, the Obama-Biden administration. But the president doesn't care about all the inaction he inherited. He's a man of action, not of talk. And that's why he is speaking at length early and often with these uh, Republican and Democratic lawmakers. In the meantime, his legislative and policy teams here have worked for seven straight weeks on the possibilities. Um, just three days ago, we had some of the nation's mayors here, Mayor of Fort Worth, Texas, Mayor of Miami, Mayor of Burnsville, Minnesota, Mayor of Parkland, Florida, Mayor of Dayton, Ohio. A very robust conversation listening to them about best practices and the needs and what they think can and should be done. And uh, we, we are listening, but we are also acting. And I think the president will be the one to come out and, and announce uh, some of the decisions and what you know, he's dis he, he has discussed with a bipartisan group of uh, senators and members of Congress. Obviously, his cabinet members will be meeting with the president again today, and uh, things are uh, things are happening. Can you speak about the plans? Are there any plans for the president to meet with uh, Rouhani at the UNGA? Well, the UNGA plans have not been yet solidified, and the schedule is in progress. I, I know that he has said maybe, and our Secretary Pompeo has said maybe, so I'll leave it at that. Kellyanne, I know you hit on some of the broad points about the recent court decisions vis-a-vis -vis asylum. Uh, for the American people who don't know sort of the minutia, can you just break it down simply for them, what they should know about what has happened and what's happening going forward? Sure. Well, this country continues to be the most generous when it comes to people seeking asylum for many different reasons. Uh, certainly for people who want to immigrate here legally, over 33 million and counting have and, and should continue to do so, according to this president, uh, Kevin. But at the same time, if you are coming from a Northern Triangle country and you're going through Mexico for most of your journey and you're touching that third, that third safe country, then this court decision would allow implementation of the president's action to, for you to stay there while, you're, while your process is being claimed. Otherwise, people are coming into the border and the claims aren't processed at all. We're just, it's just catch and release into the interior. And I've said many times in front of you and elsewhere, I've asked many times you and others, can you assure me that we know what happens to every single person who's just released into the interior here? Is every young teen not sexually assaulted, not, into sex, not being sexually trafficked? 
Is, is she safe? Is she alive? Is he safe? Is he alive? Does everybody come here and assimilate and, and get economic prosperity and and uh, become part of our, our, our great nation? So we want to make sure that we have an immigration policy that works. So whether it is these two Supreme Court decisions from this year, uh, the other Supreme Court decision allowing the Pentagon $2.5 billion towards the construction, since this is a national security issue. So these are back-to-back -back Supreme Court decisions. That plus the border crossing numbers that went down significantly from July to August. Usually they go up from July to August. They're down. Uh, and we see a number of different measures. This president talking about executive actions on the Flores decision, since Congress refuses to do three quick fixes on TVPRA, which is basically recycling young children uh, through the system. The Flores decision, which only gives uh, 20 days for a minor child to be held before they're released into the interior. And, and also these asylum laws. So this president is taking executive action where Congress has failed to act. I know that there are some of them, anyway, they get their messaging straight or talking about impeachment. There's no public appetite for that. And they had a big summer slump and their big superstars who were testifying. Those were dud after dud after dud. I saw Politico reported on a poll today that apparently 10 percent of Democrats say that they think impeachment is a top priority, but 54 percent say that it's a top priority to the Democrats in Congress. I mean, that's just, that is such a disconnect between what rank and file Democrats are telling members of their own party. They want drug pricing, they want infrastructure, they want health care, they want common sense, they want uh, common gun sense uh, reform, um, and thereby all the while protecting the Second Amendment rights of millions of Americans who own, who are law abiding citizens who legally own their firearms. Do you think this case, do you think this? This decision by the Supreme Court signals a new willingness by the nation's highest court to uh, step into the middle of nationwide injunctions by district court judges, especially on immigration. Well, I, well, I would refer you to the Attorney General's op-ed last week, I believe it was in the Wall Street Journal, about nationwide injunctions. I think he speaks for the entire administration, and I would commend, commend you that. I just wanted to say thank you to each of you um, for or each of your, I think, networks, outlets each of you for giving a lot of fair and full coverage to the president and the FDA and HHS's action yesterday on e-cigarettes. This is about youth. This is about briefings and data that we've seen about youth. Uh, we think there is a public health interest and value in adults who are trying to come down from combustible cigarettes uh, to using e-cigarettes as a substitute. But anybody who is ignoring the fact that roughly 220,000 youth reported to using these products in 2011, and now it's close to 5 million self-reported. You have uh, high school kids saying, hey, who thought to put toilets and sinks in the vaping room here? I mean, anybody who's saying otherwise that somehow there is a, there is a public health interest in having flavors called unicorn milk and fruity tutti and creme brulee and bourbon, let's be real about what this is about. And I just have to say, we don't always get uh, a fair shake. But I thought that, that was, uh, this was one of those nonpartisan issues where there was a lot of bipartisan support and a lot of fair coverage from your own outlet. So thank you for that. Thank you.